We are calling on everybody to think Africa, act Africa, and prosper Africa. It comes down to the change of mindset. I think this is an opportunity which Africa should not miss. We are implementing the Africa we want. A lot of the countries understand that this is good for them, that it is a game changer. This is an historic moment for our continent. So this is entirely African driven. These African countries are making a treaty among themselves. We've been brought up with so many borders. You know, we have our little countries, we have our little economies, our little sectors. We have uh, so many things that divide us and I think this is an opportunity to really push against those boundaries and to change them. As the old adage goes, there is strength in unity. For the 55 African Union member states, that strength lies in numbers. With a population of 1.2 billion and a GDP of two and a half trillion dollars, the prospect and now realization of a continental free trade area for Africa promises to usher in a new era of industrialization and business opportunities towards the realization of Agenda 2063, the Africa we want. Hi there and welcome to another wonderful episode of African Student Voices on, on AU TV. We are coming to you live from the headquarters of the Association of African Investors Accra, Ghana. And please do want to follow us on our social media handles, AUTV underscore AU underscore TV on Twitter, and also the Association of African Investors on Facebook and YouTube for more of our content. Do want to add your voice to the movement African Student Voices fan page on Facebook. And let's hear what you have. Today, we'll be we're talking about the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. You know, we've had industry talk about it, we had politics view on it. We want to find out how, how our students also see this whole agreement. How is it going to help higher education? How do they find themselves developing with this agreement? So don't go anywhere. Just stay tuned. We'll go for a quick pause. When we come back, I'll let you know my guest for today and the discussion. Accountancy College is a business school that was set up over two decades ago to contribute towards the human capital development in Botswana and beyond. BAC has over 20 years diversified its product portfolio to offer accounting, business, leisure, management and ICT related programs at undergraduate and postgraduate levels, as well as consultancy short courses to augment professional skills. In achieving this diversification, the college has partnered with UK-based universities of Derby, Sunderland Land and Sheffield Hallam University, as well as professional bodies such as SEMA, Beaker, AAT, ACCA, CIA, Cisco, Microsoft, SAP, ESA, and SIPS to allow our graduates to have a globally recognized qualification and be globally competitive. To learn more about BAC, contact us on 3953062 in Gaborone or 2410558 in Francistown or visit our website on www.bac.ac.b. Also, you can visit our social media pages on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. BAC, celebrating over 20 years of creating business leaders. Hello there and welcome back. If you just joined us, African Student Voice on AAU TV, the voice of higher education in Africa. I'm your host for today, Ajeman Dakum. And as I told you before, one for the pause, we're trying to assess the benefits and the dangers of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement to the continent itself and also to higher education because that's where we are. And I have with me Ebenezer Gapson Gapo, and he is the Ghana Union of Professional Students, right? Sure. Yes. And I also have with me Judah Thompson, also a student uh, from the CAF University College. Great. Gentlemen, you're welcome to African Student Voices. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Sure. I know you've really been through a hard time because school just reopened and then, you know, gaps or professor students' issues are just popping up and then all on that. But I think that it's still worth it when I, we come together to talk about something very important to the future of this continent, that is the free trade agreement. Many years ago, I recall that Tokami Nkrumah 
met all leaders in Africa at Addis Ababa to change the OAU to AU. I think at that moment, he really meant it that we really come together to form one united continent, just like how the European Union was. I think that's like 50 years ago or 30 years ago. That's so many years ago. And it didn't work. But now we are trying to put together a free trade agreement, which we know could have happened past. So, Eben, um, um, what do you see as Africa's drift from that time to this time? What have we learned, or perhaps what dawned on us to start this now and not then? I believe that as we are growing up, we learn a lot of things in most of the things that we do. We learn from our mistakes. We correct our mistakes and make sure that going forward, we don't repeat those mistakes. Now, looking at what Dr. Kwame Nkoma, the idea he had to bring all African countries together and ensure that we have one common agenda, one common money and everything. All these ideas were not one way or the other seen during his era, but after he left, President Kim, they also bought into that idea and they decided that, okay, looking at that idea, we need to learn from our mistakes. Look at what the Europeans are doing. They are making sure that they have come together and they are working towards the development of Europe. Yeah. And that way, if we as African countries, we can't come together and have a common goal, have a common currency, have a common agenda to help each other in, in the level of economy, in the level of trade and other things, we are all going to shoot ourselves back in the foot and also go back in our development. And I believe that idea of coming together now, yes, it might, be, it might have been in the past or it might be too late, but now I believe that they coming together is going, is going to go a long way to help us. Would you say the African leaders at that time made a mistake not to, recon not to really, should have reconsidered this whole thing? Perhaps they didn't see the future. Um, I would say it's never too late. Because um, you can never say never. So far as it's in, I believe that now we will have to make good use of the agreement and make sure that we would never go back in those kind of agreements and make sure that we go forward, we move Africa forward by not moving Africa back. Judah, what would you say we, at the African continent, lost for all those times when free trade agreements could have been our stepping stone to one wonderful uh, continent. What have we lost all this while? Well, we've lost a lot in terms of finances, in terms of the economy, in terms of lives as well. But I personally, I understand why it wasn't formed then. Because a lot of factors come into play if okay. you're going to form something like this and it's going to work. Uh, as of that time, I believe some of the African countries have still not gained independence. Some of our countries are still as young as 23 and then 30 years. And this contributed to the fact that the, the reason why they were not able to do it. And one of the things that I feel bad about that we lost is the xenophobic attacks that went on in South Africa some years back. If this trade agreement was in fruition by that time, there would have been laws that would protect people, business owners who are in those African countries. And then we would have saved ourselves that embarrassment in the world stage, yeah. that life that lost, and then those uh, frictions that came between the countries that were involved. This and a whole lot of money because if this agreement, as you said, about 50 years ago came into fruition, 30 years down the line, I believe they would have understood that we can use one currency if we have one economy that is working for us. And if we had one currency, I believe it could have been stronger than the dollar or the euro or the pound sterling right now. Mm. So we've lost a lot, but then it's never too late. Okay, okay. No, just try to console me because I'm really <laughs> serious. But, 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 you know, let's talk about the future of, this, of the African continent of future agreements. This has quite come to bring uh, African countries together. But let's look at how it can affect higher education in Africa. If borders are opened and people can now move to and fro to various African countries, what, do you, what can you say it, it's in it for students, African students? What is the benefit that we can take from this? Um, for instance, when you come to GAPS, that's the Ghana Union of Professional Students. Yeah. We have a secretary that is the International Professional Summit. Now, what the International Professional Summit uh, secretary or secretary does is that okay. he she help all the international students who are in the union, okay. 
who need facilitating with their transportation from their school to their various countries. Okay. She ensures that anybody who is in gaps, who wants to go back home, who wants to come back to school, mm -hmm. the, there is that bit of relief in terms of transportation. Okay. Now with this, I believe that she would have an easy access to certain things because now there is a free movement or there's an agreement of free movement. Mm. So she can be able to go to other embassies, other countries' consulate to help push the agenda when somebody is from, let's say, Nigeria, and the person wants to come to school in Ghana. In fact, most of our in universities are bump up with students from Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Senegal, and the rest. Yeah. They are coming to get knowledge from Ghana. Sure. So with this, it will also create more other avenues for other students in other countries to also come to Ghana to come and get more knowledge and mm -hmm. take it back to their country. One way or the other, we are beefing up the education system. Another way is also we are also sanitizing the youth mm -hmm. in, the f in the field of academics because if I get knowledge in Ghana, one way I'll go back and what? Go back to develop my country. So I believe it's a very good initiative. This initiative, was it done before or perhaps you saw that the future of the AFCTA could actually you put in this initiative there would help support or you were it was there quite long ago um, this initiative was a policy my international relations secretary came up with when she was being elected into office and i believe it is a good idea so as a president i had no option than to push her to do it and it's something that we have never regretted ever doing mm. okay uh, judah now we're considering the issue of war wage countries in africa all right mm. Some countries are just war zones. They just various wars all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, opening up the borders, people want to go and study in these countries, but security-wise, there's war. Mm -hmm. We have, on one hand, the benefits, but look at this issue of war. Is it going to be helping at all? The issue of war, yes, it will be helpful because if um, the government of Ghana has an industry or an entity in, let's say, Sudan, that is benefiting the country, that is earning a lot of money for the country. And then there's war day. It is in his interest to ensure that he intervenes in whatever is going on there any way possible so that it will come down. Students who are in Sudan can also say, okay, if this is going on in our country and it's going to affect my academics, if I have the finances, then I can go to Ghana and study. I, as a SRC president, I get to interact with a lot of students in my school, mostly the Nigerians. And one of the things they say is Ghana is very peaceful. Ghana is very... I'm um, welcoming. When you meet Ghanaians, they are very nice people. Unlike Nigeria, if you meet someone and you talk and you realize you are not from their country, they will mugu you or something like that. And it's a good thing to hear. When they go back to their country, one way or the other, they will try to implement some of the things that they've learned here. So yes, these wars can affect this trade agreement. But then I believe if the other countries, let's say South Africa, Nigeria, Egypt, they have entities in Sudan that is making them a lot of money and then there's war going on in Sudan, they will be compelled to intervene in that war so that it will end for their business to grow. Students in Sudan can also say, if this is going on, I can't delay, shall the time not day. So I would rather rush to maybe any of the closest African countries. I can go to Kenya, I can go to Namibia, I can go to Ghana, study, learn some new things and bring it back to my country to help them because the future is actually not for those who are fighting, the future is for us. So then if we can go outside and pick new things and come back to our country to be beneficial. So the phobic attacks in South Africa is, is one of the reasons why I'm saying, I'm asking you, Dex, mm -hmm. that with all these things, these are creating big dents in the hearts of students. So if you were a student, perhaps in the university in uh, South Africa, you went to university or something else, and you have to go back, hoping that this uh, agreement is going to create a platform for you, are you going to go back there with a good heart? I don't know, can you come Believe in? It, Believing that it won't happen again, because now the agreement binds us together, yeah. really opens the doors for us to go and study anywhere we want to go and study. But we have people attacking, or South Africans attacking other African uh, students or uh, uh, say trade people mm -hmm. over there. What, 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 would you be inspired or with that yeah. motivation to go back there instead? To be honest, I'll be more confident going now than before because now I will know that there's an agreement that will protect me. If anything should happen to me or any person from my country, my government has something to stand on to intervene on our behalf. I have not seen personally any publication that says the people that were involved actively in those xenophobic attacks were brutally punished or anything of that sort. This is because there's nothing that governs things of that sort. If there's this trade agreement, it will have its um, 
pros and cons. They will set rules and regulations on how it's supposed to run. So if you should attack anyone in the name of this is my country, I should have the uh, privilege of selling some things that you don't have. There's a law that will come against you. So I'll be more confident going now than before because at first anything can happen and then there will be very little to support me. But now if I go, if anything should happen to myself or any member of my country, my government can intervene and then say, okay, because of this that happened, I'm going to take you on. That's okay. That's excellent. Let's, let's not talk about the issue of SMEs now, trying to carry your goods. You've identified a, a big market like Nigeria and you think you can travel over there. But moving there now, we have issues on their border. Recently, the border was closed for some reasons that perhaps you can, you can tell us. In times like these, while we are trying to prepare the waters or prepare the ground for harmonization of trade and you close down your border, what are you trying to tell the African continent? Um, Nigeria's economy, I believe it's one of the biggest economies in, Ghana, in Africa. Um, and I think that sometimes they will just, I, I believe that they want, to, they want to tell the whole Africa that, yes, I'm a strong force when it comes to trade. But with this particular agreement, it will, it will cramp upon the fact that they are going to call themselves the big gangs because, one, it's going to create avenue for somebody who is having a small business in Ghana or, let's say, Kenya, to be able to move to the economy in Nigeria to also go and transact his business. That way, one way or the other, he's going to get uh, how, something like profit yeah. because now he's also going to rub shoulders with other businesses or small-scale businesses in Nigeria. Yeah. And one way, we are going to create the platform for everybody to also move to other countries. Secondly, I believe that um, if you have a business and you are making, let's say, 10000 in a year, you go to in your particular country and you move it to a very big country, I believe that you are going to make extra, extra profit. Yeah. So with this part particular agreement, we are also going to encourage or we are going to help young businesses to also grow to become big businesses. Let's look at the issue about um, now, gone were the days when tariffs were placed on goods entering um, other countries, but now there are no tariffs. Mm -hmm. So if you are a member of this three agreements, uh, zero tariffs, or let's say no tariffs for you, but we've had issue of drug trafficking, mm -hmm. crime. Mm -hmm. Now these things, we can't put them aside. Mm -hmm. So in, a, in an area like this, how do we control it? But well, before you give me the feedback on that, we'll have to go for a quick pause and come back. We'll talk about how crime and other draft trafficking, uh, tra trafficking activities can be resolved or controlled in this agreement. We'll go and back. Stay there. Africa, Ahmad. Magadi Nimose. Hola, todos. Bonjour. Nagaiswa. Kuyadah. Salivonani Lonke. Moribwanji. Hello. We are Africa University. Africa University has brought the U.S. to me where I couldn't go, and now is taking Africa to the world. And I am Africa. As a community of diverse cultures and languages, Africa University is passionate about moving the agenda of Pan-Africanism. Africa University, the dream is alive. I'm studying Medical Laboratory Sciences on the STEM scholarship. Africa University has the best malaria research lab in the entire country. So if you're interested in lab sciences or conducting any sort of research, then Africa University is the place to be. Africa University is the school of hope in the value of dreams. Come and join me. We're going to make Africa better than before. You might have not been to all the African countries. Come to Africa University and see Africa happening every day. An institution that offers a world-class education system. Are you thinking of being a global person? Thinking of enhancing your business and leadership skills? Why not choose Africa University? As a working mother and a wife, through one of its many flexible programs, Africa University has afforded me an opportunity to pursue my master's degree in Welcome back to African Student Voices. As Africans, we have to devote ourselves to issues that matter to this continent. And before we went for the pause, we we're talking about crime, drug trafficking. D these things are not new to the African continent. Yes. But we are now about entering an agreement that 
guarantees as tariff-free and perhaps other restrictions that could have frustrated you at the borders, no more. Mm -hmm. And now, what are we doing about issue of drugs, trafficking, and crime? That's a tough question. A very, to tough, a very tough one. <laughs> yes, but then um, drug trafficking has been a canker that has plagued the world since time in Memorial Island. I believe that no tariffs or little tariffs at the border does not mean um, free border. You can easily walk in with anything at all. In ECOWAS right now, the um, citizens of the uh, members, member states can travel between uh, each country with very little restrictions. However, when you are from Ghana, if, as close as Togo, if you are entering Togo, there are some things that they check. So then if we are going to make the tariffs free, we are going to make things flexible, then we should strengthen some things that will check these things because irrespective of the fact that you can travel without a visa to Nigeria or Ivory Coast, when you get to the airport, there are some things that they check. If you are with even water, they will tell you you cannot travel with it. If you are with some beverages, you are unable to fly with it. So if we can keep some of the rules that govern the things that you can travel with, or the things that you can send to those countries. Removing the tariffs does not mean we are allowing you to bring anything at all inside. It means we are going to check some of the things you bring inside, just that we will not charge you on it. Mm. So I believe if we are going to strengthen this and make it work, then we should strengthen the borders also. I'm not saying to be able to eradicate everything because they are very smart, all those drug lots, and they have means and ways they are going to travel and send them some things through. But then if we strengthen the border when we are reducing the tariffs, to give the opportunity to check some of these things. Sure. Let, let's talk about culture. You know, you know culture <laughs> is very important. Uh, we, we Ghanaians have a, our culture. We are known to be hospitable. Nigerians have their culture and other countries in Africa. Now, going to someone's um, environment to trade means starting a new life in a new environment, which you are not exposed to ahead of time. Can we take this? Or is there a way we, we can control this new culture exposure? Um, there is a saying that if you go to Rome, you do what the Romans do. Okay. So, for instance, I go to Nigeria and I know that um, this is how their market is like. You need to learn because I believe in everything we do, education is key. Any market you go, you need to learn, you need to strategize to know how the market is like, how the market operates. So with that, you will go into that particular market with much confidence, with much education, much knowledge about the market. Because if you go to a market and you don't know how it's been, like, it's been operated or how it goes around, you are going to go and you come back with losses. But if you go with more knowledge about that particular system, how the market operates, you go and come back with profits. You go and you, you become established, you become firm. So I believe that in all this, there should be education. Mm. There should be more research. If you do this, you go into market and you strive. You, you move your companies higher to higher grounds. Let's talk about the issue of education right now. Who needs the education? Is it um, the, the African people who need the education? And who, who does this? Who uh, actually should take this upon themselves? Okay, I'm going to educate the people to prepare them for this agreement. So I like to take GLOW as an example. When GLOW was coming to the Ghanaian market, it had to strategize to know how the Ghanaian market is, how he would promote his product in Ghana. So with all the strategies and tactics about how the Ghanaian market is, GLOW came to Ghana, learned how to make his market in Ghana, and he knew that with that he had to educate Ghanaians how his business is or how the telecommunication how his telecommunication is like. So with that, the company itself needs to educate the indigenous of the country to let them know what they are getting out of the particular product. And with that, the company will also move forward. Because if I learn something about the Nigerian market, I remember my grandmom used to go to Nigeria when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. He used to bring us this Samoveta. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't know what it was, but when she comes back with it, she has to teach me what it is. And with that, with time, I got to know what it is, and I knew how to prepare it myself. So if there is an education, it has to come from, one, the company itself, and two, if the people who are going to use it are ready and willing to learn, mm -hmm. that is one thing that we also have to consider. Because if I come to teach you something and you're not ready to learn it, that means you're going to back out of that product. So you need to make sure that there will be more sanitization about your product before you go into the market. 
Okay. Would you I want? Would, yeah. That, on, I sure. want to say something. Right? Yeah. I think one thing they can also consider is to be able to adapt. Because if you go to Circle or Casual right now and you are buying electronic gadgets or accessories, you would want to buy it from a Nigerian than a Ghanaian. Why? Because the Nigerians have come to understand the market very well. If you are buying a mobile phone from a Nigerian, he can price it down to the lowest price. He, can, he might be, even be able to sell it to you at the price that he bought it. He just wants to make you happy so that at a, another time you would come. But if you meet most of the Ghanaians, as long as they give you the price, they reduce it one or two and then they will not want to talk about it. And they can actually tell you to leave if you cannot buy it. But Nigerians, even if you are unable to buy it, they will tell you, oh, you did take my number when you get money. They've been able to understand the average Ghanaian that, okay, you know, in Ghana, every price you mention, even at the most, some people want to reduce the price of some of the stuff. <laughs> yeah. Every price you mention, someone would want to reduce. So then they've understood that. They've adapted to that market system and then they are working with it. So it's up to the companies that are coming to the very, going to the various countries that, okay, when I get there, maybe this is my business plan. This are, it's part of how to be an entrepreneur. You should be able to adapt to change. So you get to this country. This is how I'm going to run my business. You run it for a period of time. You see that even though it's working, it's not rubbing shoulders with a giant in the country. Okay, what are they doing differently? What, is the, what does the market want from me? So you learn that, you incorporate it into your business, and I believe with that, that people will come to appreciate what you are doing, and you also earn what you want to earn from it. You know, some countries are not having that kind of resources compared to others. Mm -hmm. So in Africa, we can now subdivide to, okay, those um, people who are developing, mm -hmm. and are developing, those so are well developed. Mm -hmm. And we also have some line out we have anglophones and we have francophones all in this continent now these are dents that have been created already unifying us with an afct agreement in a system like this what are your fears if you were to tell okay personally my fears my fears about this afct is not even about the divisions that we have because wherever we are in the world there's going to be divisions there's going to be christians and muslims they are going to be English-speaking people. They are going to be French-speaking people. Everywhere we are at every point in time, there are going to be divisions. So then it's up to us, the individuals that are working to go above it. As I said, I would be more comfortable to buy an electronic gadget or accessories from a Nigerian than a Ghanaian, even though I'm a Ghanaian. So then I've come to understand that. And if we, the people, understand that those divisions will, will not even have to see them. It will be, not be there. My fear about this uh, trade is, you see... We talk about those growing economies and then those who are not up there yet. For example, there are farmers in Ghana. Raw material is one of the key um, contributors to the GDP of most of the African countries. Sure. Now, there are small-scale farmers in Ghana who are doing very well. If we open up our market, there are v countries that are very large-scale farmers, and they are going to bring their product into our country. What is going to happen to those people? Now, there are no tariffs, so the things that they are bringing will be cheaper. Mm -hmm. My fear is that those people are going to suffer. Mm -hmm. Because, yes, there will be competing products that actually look good, are presented better from, uh, and everybody likes things from a tree. <laughs> so then, yes, <laughs> things that look better, taste better, feel better, and then you are producing it here, and then it's real like that. People will want to prefer that. Now that there are no tariffs, it will be cheaper. So my fear is some of the raw market, raw, uh, small scale owners who produce raw things may suffer. Because mm -hmm. Um, even though we produce a lot of cocoa, Ivory Coast is ahead of us. Mm -hmm. And if Ivory Coast decides to flood our market with cocoa, in case we get a, a company that is producing more of the cocoa product, it's going to affect our small-scale farmers. In Ghana. That's mm -hmm. my fear. Mm -hmm. Language. So I can't speak French very well. No, I can, I can try on my bonjour and then bonsoir, <laughs> but I can't speak very well. But I want to go to Cote d'Ivoire and then trade. You think I'm, a, I'm endangering myself or perhaps I'm not really fit for it? Um, Basically, I believe language won't be a barrier in trade because, for instance, I'm going to Cote d'Ivoire to transact a business. Yeah. Um, I know that basically the language spoken in Cote d'Ivoire is it's French. French. Yeah. So I need to equip myself before going to the country. Okay. If you don't equip yourself, you go and you, may, you might go and be blackmailed. Sorry to say this, but if you are already equipped with the particular language you are going in with, you'll be able to know how to transact business. You'll be able to have a, a, a very nice uh, environment to transact your business. So basically, we need to equip ourselves as individuals who are having the mindset of what, having this particular trade move forward. Mm -hmm. Because if somebody 
is in Ghana and wants to go to Egypt to transact business because of the, the agreement, he will have to equip himself with the language spoken in Egypt, yeah. which is Arabic, yeah. before he moves to that country. Okay. So we all need to equip ourselves as individuals or as companies. Mm. If we have to employ, because in Ghana we have, other, we have institutions that are learning languages. So if I want to go to Cote d'Ivoire, certainly I have to go to one of these language institutions and go and learn their language mm. and go to that country knowing that I have already equipped myself with the adequate knowledge I need about the country I'm going in. So higher education has a role to play in terms of making a course, should there be a, a program titled AFCTA Studies? <laughs> or Not only <laughs> AFCTA Studies, maybe New Development in Africa Studies or something like that, because there are lots of things that are going to come up, I believe. Now that the youth are taking up responsibilities in politics, in sure. governance, and that, there are lots of things that are going to come up. So I believe if there's um, a department or a faculty in most of the universities that teach students these things, it will be very beneficial to us. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people don't know about this AFCT. Sure. Just like the Global Compact, the last time we met here, yeah. a lot of people don't know about it either. So if there's um, a faculty or a department, not so big, in, in all the institutions that educate people on these things, it, it will be better. Great. So last words, very few words and wrap up. Let's, let's move on. Well, I believe that this program, this treaty which Africa is coming together to sign is going to go a long way to help not Ghanaians only, not Ghanaian students only, but one way or the other, Africa as a whole. Sure. Because it's going to create more student connection. Yeah. Because somebody from Ghana will be able to go to maybe South Africa with his shoulders hi head high, knowing that no xenophobic Sophic attack would come to him mm. and will be able to go in and do whatever he wants to go and do, learn, come back with the knowledge he acquired and come and help build Ghana. All right. So I think that what you said was, was perfect in terms of uh, the faculties and all that so involved. So I think that they are, they are clear, Judah was clear and then Abraham was clear that universities in Africa should try and then do something about this. AFCTA is a new paradigm shift for the African continent. Do well to uh, involve students. Let them learn about the future of this agreement so that we could really take it on a speed level for the African continent. It matters to us a lot. Thank you very much for your time, for watching African Student Voices. Do want to add your voice to this uh, discussion and keep watching AU TV. Um, I really want to say that if you are there, if you are there and you really love the African continent, support it, okay, with your positive mind because with that positive thinking, we will get there. My name is Adjimo Chudako and I'm glad you watched. Take care.